The death toll is rising in the Middle East. A new wave of Israeli-Palestinian violence has engulfed Gaza, southern Israel and the West Bank, including Jerusalem. The Security Council held an emergency meeting on the situation. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is urging the international community to work with Israeli and Palestinian leaders to avert further escalation. The region cannot afford another full-blown war, he said. This is one of the most critical tests the region has faced in recent years. Gaza is on a knife edge. The deteriorating situation is leading to a downward spiral, which could quickly get beyond anyone's control. Swedish diplomat Stefan de Mastura has been chosen to replace Lakhdar Brahimi as the special envoy of the Secretary General for Syria. Mr. Ban named Ramzi Ezeldin Ramzi as the deputy special envoy. Mr. Brahimi stepped down at the end of May after nearly two years of efforts to bring peace and stability to Syria. Unlike Mr. Brahimi, Mr. de Mastura will be known as the UN envoy and not the joint UN and Arab League envoy. In Afghanistan, civilian casualties are up 24% in the first half of this year over last year. Human rights teams are noting devastating developments. Civilians are being hurt more often by fighting between Afghan forces and militants and rocket and mortar strikes. Previously, improvised explosive devices were the biggest killer. The UN also says the fighting is increasingly in more populated areas. In 2014, we found, the UN has found, that the fight is increasingly taking place in communities, in public places, near playgrounds, and near the homes of ordinary Afghans, with death and injury, particularly to women and children, in a continued disturbing upward spiral. The majority of the world's population already lives in cities. By 2050, an additional 2.5 billion people are expected to live in urban areas. That will be about two-thirds of the population. Most of the growth will be in African and Asian countries where most of the world's rural populations live. A new UN report says that trend is posing unique challenges for the global south. And 100 years later, remembering the start of the First World War. On 28 July 1914, the assassination of Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand would trigger a deadly chain of events. Four years later, an estimated 37 million people would be killed or wounded. But the UN event this week was not as much marking the start of the war as it was highlighting the importance of reconciliation through diplomacy and dialogue. A need for that dialogue led to the creation of the League of Nations and ultimately the United Nations.